Hi guys. Um, so we're ready for chapter 17 and 18 today. We're really getting through Boy in the Tower. Their chapters are super duper short. So remember on the news yesterday, um, it's told Addy that two council workers had died at one of the uh, fallen building sites and it so happened that Addy and Gaia had seen them on the way to the shops but then they weren't there on the way back so he's very interested in this now. Um, it seems that the fallen building sites aren't just dangerous when they fall, they're dangerous after that as well but nobody knows anything. Chapter 17. I went to find Gaia as soon as I got to school the next morning. She was sitting underneath the sunflowers. We had just a little time before they would blow the whistle to line up. She looked tired, like she hadn't been to sleep much the night before. Gaia, did you see the news? I said. Did you see what happened to those two men we saw? Yes, I saw it, she said, but she didn't say anything more. Why do you think they died? Gaia didn't say anything. Do you think... Do you think that when we walked past again and didn't see them, they were... My voice trailed off. Fat tears rolled down Gaia's face. Her eyes looked large and glassy. What's wrong, Gaia? I said. Are you upset about the men we saw? Don't worry. But whatever I said... She couldn't stop the tears rolling down her face. They ran all the way down her cheeks and down her chin, making wet lines on her face until she pulled down her sleeve and wiped them away. It's okay, Gaia. It's okay. The whistle went, and Gaia sniffed and wiped her face with her sleeve again. We shouldn't have gone out last night, she said. Could have been us. She slowly stood up and walked to the line. We filed into school and sat down at our desks, but there was no work on our tables to do. Usually we start the day answering Matt's questions on the board, but the board was blank and our books weren't out. Miss Faraway sat down on her chair and looked at us blankly. She couldn't remember why she was here or why we were there. She, as if she couldn't remember why she was here or why we were there for that matter. Miss Faraway, said Paul, we haven't got our maths books. Oh yes, said Miss Faraway, maths books. And there aren't any questions on the board, Paul continued. Well, said Miss Faraway, and it seemed like she was going to say something after that, but she didn't. She didn't make a move to get our books either. Miss Faraway, are you all right? Asked Olu. Who's the kind person who always looked after people who fall over in the playground and takes them upstairs for a plaster or an ice pack? Yes, said Miss Faraway, but her eyes filled with tears. Miss Faraway, said Olu, and jumped out of her chair to comfort her. Thank you, Olu, I'm okay. Thank you, sit down, lovely. But then she really started sobbing. No one knew what to do or say. It's never happened. Teachers don't cry. Or if they do, they never do it in front of us kids. Olive stood paralysed, halfway between Miss Faraway and her chair. Some of the girls started to cry a little bit themselves, although I wondered if they knew why. I looked over to Gaia, who was looking down at her table, concentrating on a tiny spot on her desk. Miss Faraway left the room in the end. She just walked straight out. Miss Arnold, the deputy head, came in a few minutes later and found us some maths questions to do, but we were all too stunned to do any work. Is Miss Faraway okay, Miss Arnold? Ollie asked. She's very upset, as you've seen. It's a very upsetting time for a lot of people at the moment. How are you all feeling with what's going on? I'm scared, said someone straight away. I turned round and I saw the voice had come from Michael. Me too, a few people agreed. I worry every night that our block will collapse, said Paul. I can't sleep because of it. I'm frightened about being outside, said Olu. I'm scared something will happen to my little sister and my mum when they're at home during the day, said Martha. 
What if I come home from school and our building's collapsed? What should I do? We went round and round, talking about our fears and worries. Miss Arnold never said that we shouldn't worry, or that we'd be okay, or anything like that. She just smiled sadly as someone else started speaking. Guy and I didn't say anything. I listened to the sound of everyone's voices. It sounded high and coiled, as though they'd been wound up tighter and tighter until they were taut and could break at any moment. I could feel my chest folding in on itself, smaller and smaller, as though it was trying to fit into a small square box, and my breaths came quickly and shallow. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I heard someone say my name, and when I looked up, Miss Arnold was standing over me. She put her hand on my shoulder. Are you all right, Addie? She said. I nodded, but didn't stop looking away. But she didn't stop looking away from me with the same worried eyes. And I wished I could have told her the truth right then. I wished I could have cried like some of the others and have Miss Arnold pat my back comfortingly. I wish I could just have told her that I was scared, just like everyone else. Sometimes it's really hard to admit that, though. Chapter 18 We had PE outside and threw brightly coloured balls to each other, standing in long lines across the playground. Guy said that she had a stomach ache, so she sat on the wall watching us. She kept pulling her sleeves down so they came over her wrists and her hands, and then wrapping her arms around her like she was cold. Even though it was another hot, sunny, airless day, by lunchtime she seemed to be feeling a little better. She ate a couple of mouthfuls from her plate, chewing steadily and staring into the distance. And then she turned to me suddenly and said, So what do you think they're going to do now those men have died? I don't know. They don't know how they died. I watched the news all night. They just said the same thing again and again, that their deaths were being treated as suspicious. I don't think someone killed them, Gaia said. I looked at her questioningly. If no one killed them, how did they die? I think, Guy continued, and she lowered her voice to a whisper. I think it had something to do with the buildings. The buildings? We had a bad feeling about them for a reason. I think there's something wrong with them, she said. But how could a fallen down building kill two men by them standing next to it? I don't know what's wrong with them, Adiola. I'm just saying I think there's something to do with them. Guy looked cross for a moment. Then her face changed. She looked very worried. And I definitely don't think we should get close to them again. She said, you won't, will you? Go close to one again. I can always bring you some food from my house so you don't have to go to the shops. I knew what Gaia meant about having a bad feeling about the fallen buildings, but then we'd walk past them. Last, then we'd walk past them last night and we were fine now, so I wasn't sure she was right. Addy, do you promise me? Don't go anywhere near them. Okay, I said. It seemed better to agree with her than to make her panic. I didn't let on that I'd forgotten to get any milk last night and what we had left in the fridge had gone lumpy and sour smelling. I just wouldn't tell her that I was going back, going back to the shops. That way I wouldn't worry her. That evening there were lots and lots of policemen on the streets. Some of them were standing in a line, in lines in front of the falling build, fallen buildings and others were walking around with large pointy-nosed Alsatians that were sniffing the pavements and the walls. I decided to go to the closest news agent, which was only a little shop, but which had a fridge with pints of cold milk in it. It wasn't very far away. I had to go the same route as I had taken with Gaia the day before, but I didn't stop to look at the buildings at all today. I hurried past the line of policemen that surrounded the area where the two men had been found. Finally, I made it to the shop and bought a large bottle of milk so it would last us a bit longer. Be careful out there, Sonny, the shopkeeper said as he passed me the change. He looked out of the window as though he'd expected something to happen at any moment. 
The bottle felt cold in my hands, but I didn't wait for a bag. I wanted to get home as quickly as I could. Now that I was out on the streets, I started to feel more and more like Guy was right, that I shouldn't have come out. I don't know if it was because of what Guy had told me, or if there really was something in the air, something menacing out there. It said, no one is safe. I decided I would run back to my tower. I could almost picture in my head exactly what was going to happen in the next few minutes. I would run down the road, turn off down the first street and sprint past the policeman and then run in a straight line to my tower, open the door and bang it behind me. The door would go slam. No problems. I'd be safe. Hmm. Is he going to be safe? That felt like a... A little foreshadowing of something negative to come. He's picturing this that's going to happen. Going forwards, he's going to run to his tower block and everything's going to be fine. I can't help but thinking. It's not going to be that simple. See you on our next session for chapter 19 and 20, guys.